So there's a lot of awareness in the personalized health and wellness space uh, these days about the importance of methylation and proper dosage and form of B vitamins, right? So, you know, uh, people that have MTHFR mutations, uh, especially uh, compound homozygotes for MTHFR C677T, which is one of the, the more sort of impactful SNP that, that a lot of the, the population has, you know, may be advised by their physician to take a methylated B vitamin instead of folic acid, which is a, the synthetic form of folate B9, um, sort of bypass what could be a, um, a slightly diminished capacity to, to utilize uh, folate and also a propensity for elevated homocysteine. So this is an issue that's that's becoming more uh, people are becoming more aware of, and there's also several companies that are out there right now who are you know putting a lot of marketing dollars behind discovering uh, these issues, which again are are fairly fairly common. These are fairly common SNPs. Not to say that they're not impactful, but but um are fairly common SNPs in the MTHFR genes. Um, the next step for many of you who find out that you have an MTHFR uh, mutation is to go and to try methylated B vitamins. Now, whether that's a wise choice is something you can discuss with your physician, but what I'm here to kind of zero in on today is, is the dose. Because we've had a blog on the Gene Food uh, website for several years now that's updated and maintained that discusses methylfolate side effects and methylfolate dosing. And um, you know, if you go out and you take mega doses of methylfolate, a lot of people have very, very poor reactions to that, to that to that protocol. Now, I just got an email a couple of days ago from someone who um, had been taking very high doses of methylfolate and had terrible sleep and anxiety issues and then stopped and tapered and was starting to starting to feel better. Again, it's a, it's a question for your physician in terms of in terms of how you handle this, but if you look out there in the supplement world, um, Thorn, for example, to their credit, um, is, is a, it's a great company. Um, you know, they're making a, a methylated B vitamin that has a methylfolate product that has a more conservative dose of one milligram, and then they have a higher dose of five milligrams. Um, but in today's uh, video, I want to share a clip from a, a recent interview I did with Dr. Neil Nathan, who's been a pioneer of research on the topic of methylation and how it can impact on the chronically ill. And Dr. Nathan discusses a study that he did um, and experience with his patients where they have started uh, individuals on doses of methylfolate at 200 micrograms, which is far, far, far lower than uh, what is available in any supplement that I'm aware of that's on the market. And, um, you know, this is a, a, a something that's relevant for, for those of you who are out there who may have discovered um, SNPs that are the impact on methylation and homocysteine and are looking for a conservative way to introduce a methylated B vitamin without running into some of the really common side effects that people experience after taking a, a, a methylated B vitamin product for a long period of time. So without further ado, here is the clip from Dr. Nathan. The first um, actual research projects on using, uh, um, first of all, establishing the importance of methylation in almost all chronic conditions. And we were researching chronic fatigue and fibromyalgia specifically. And what we discovered was by, me by measuring methylation chemistry, virtually everyone with chronic fatigue and, and fibromyalgia had imbalances in methylation chemistry. And so when we thought about treating it, we actually started with really low doses. That was probably fortunate because we didn't get into these overreactions that we see a lot of. So in our initial study, which were 30 patients, we treated them with hydroxy B12 and 200 micrograms of 5-methyl tetrahydrofolate. And over a period of three to nine months, all of our patients normalized their methylation chemistry and the vast majority were much better. So to my knowledge, it was that research project that began to excite people about the importance of methylation and why it needs to be addressed. And then everyone on the sun developed their own um, formulas for what to do and how to do it and how to give it. But I began to see the concept, which is very prevalent in this world, that if some is good, more is better surface. And then I began to see people using massive doses of 5-methyl tetrahydrofolate, which 
In our study, 200 micrograms was effective in virtually everyone in reversing their, their chemistry. Conversely, in patients who are very sensitive, most of them can't take 5-methyl tetrahydrofolate in any dose until they get healthier and stronger and better because it will make many of them much, much, much worse. For many people that are taking five milligrams, or if they're taking a product like Leucovoran, we're talking 25 milligrams. And that's, that means micrograms is a fraction of that. So 200 micrograms, it, 10 times that would be two milligrams. Um, 25 times that would be five, the five milligram dose. So people are often taking um, a, a dose of 5-methyl tetrahydrofolate that they don't need and may get them into trouble.